Good morning students. Let's continue with our topic. Yesterday we were discussing the main ideas presented by George Orwell in his essay Down the Mine. And he begins his essay by emphasizing the importance of coal and coal miners. Then further he suggests that the right time to visit a mine is when the miners are at work. He also explains about the various processes that undergoes in a coal mine like cutting, blasting and extraction of coal. He also tells about how one can enter a coal mine and also about the return journey. And now today we will further discuss his views about the miners and mining process which includes the crawling business also. He says that a miner has to crawl to and fro in a mine and this is very tiring and hard. This a miner has to do in addition to the seven and a half hours of work. Generally when we think of the coal mine we think of depth, heat and darkness, the blackening figures cutting at walls of coal but we never think about those miles of creeping or say crawling or say commuting to and fro. This crawling is not technical work and the miner is not paid for it. And sometimes it takes one hour, more often two and sometimes even three hours. So this is really a very stupendous task, a very difficult task and for this they are not even paid. Next he tells about the underground processes. He says that coal lies in thin seams or say uh, between enormous layers of rock. Hence the process of taking out coal is like scooping the central layer from a Neapolitan ice. In old days the miners used to cut straight into the coal with pick and crowbar and it was a very slow process or say a very slow job. But nowadays the preliminary work is done by an electrically driven coal cutter which moves backwards or forwards on its own power. And it makes an awful noise and sends forth clouds of coal dust. And this makes impossible more than two or three feet to breathe. Then it has this coal face has to be loosened with explosives. A man with an electric drill bores holes at intervals in the coal inserts blasting powder plucks it with clay goes off the corner if there is one and touches off the charge with an electric current this loosens the coal it does not bring it out when the charge is too powerful it not only brings the coal out but brings the roof down as well then after blasting coal is broken it is loaded in the form of boulders the three operations of cutting blasting and extraction are done in three separate shifts the cutting in the afternoon the blasting at night and filling in the morning shift orwell says that the fillers do undoubtedly perform a stupendous task, task and that a miner's job is beyond his power. He is not a manual laborer and he cannot imagine doing such things. Next he talks about the coal miner's world. The universe, their universe is very different from ours. The coal miners at work inhabit a different world from our own. The world of coal miners is a world apart from ours, but it is a world which we can ill afford to overlook. Practically everything we do involves the use of coal directly or indirectly. 
for all the arts of peace coal is needed and all the more in time of revolution the miner must go on working or the revolution will stop the hacking and shoveling of coal must go on without pause or at any rate without pausing for more than a few weeks at the most we all know that we must have coal but we seldom or never remember what coal mining involves orwell here is keen to remind his readers the vast majority of whom would never so much as seen the inside of a mine let alone worked in one that the world is governed by coal and even some mass shake up of the current world order such as a war or a revolution would still necessitate the mining of coal to heat fires fuel machinery and do the countless other things it either directly or indirectly contributes to in the course of daily life so he further says that um, till recently the conditions in the miners sorry in the mines the conditions in the mines were worse than are now a few old women living today in their youth worked underground even when they were pregnant more than any other manual worker the miners can stand as the type firstly because his work is awful and secondly because it is so vitally necessary and yet remote from our experience this essay of orwell shows empathy and profound respect to the miners although orwell believes in equality it is through his experience that he realizes that it is impossible because someone has to do the menial work in order for a civilization to function like a well oiled machine and without the manual laborers there would be no industry and people would not be able to casually go about their lives as they have been doing so this essay down the mine is a classic example of orwell's willingness to put himself at some discomfort in order to experience the conditions of other people orwell went and lived among them and his journey down the mine showed his commitment to documenting as faithfully as he could the plight of mine workers in a fairly typical coal mine by if we analyze this essay we come across the socialistic views of george orwell orwell is a humanist also he believes in humanism and this essay very well reflects this aspect of orwell his philosophy of life he believes in humanism sympathy and admiration for the coal miners and for the whole labor class is very well exhibited in this essay and also highlights the contribution importance of labor class orwell's style of writing is picturesque and he portrays the details in a neat terse style so these are the main ideas or the main points related to this essay that emphasizes the importance of coal and coal miners for our civilization that's all for today thank you